Hey guys, Mr. Kyle at Myers Mathematics, and we have our September 11th factoring day today. It's uh, kind of an anniversary of sorts, not really a celebration, more of a, a memorial um, for what happened. Um, if you're a high school student watching this, you probably were uh, just starting to be born around this time. That's that long ago now. It seems like just yesterday. But uh, without further ado, we have three videos today because it's an odd number day. So we have three, three videos, even though it looks like two over here. This is x squared plus 4x minus 5 and x squared minus 4x minus 5. And then x squared plus 4x minus 12. <clears throat> so let's just dive right in. We've got x squared plus 4x minus 5. So I need to uh, not worry about the thing in front of x squared. There's nothing in front of there, right? There's an imaginary 1. Well, it's, it's a real 1, but it's just not written. Um, so I don't need to worry about factoring that in. All I need to do is find two things that multiply to give me 5, <coughs> and they have to subtract to give me 4. They have to subtract because 5 is negative. Meaning, if I find two factors of 5, I need 1 to be positive and 1 to be negative, so that when I multiply them, I get a negative number. Um, now, since 5 is a prime number, the only things that multiply to give you 5 are, well, 5 and 1, or 1 and 5. Now, if I do 5 and 1, and they're both positive, then I'm not going to get negative 5 when I multiply. So one of them has to be negative. If I make the 1 negative, it works. 5 minus 1, right? Positive 5 minus 1 gives me positive 4. If I were to switch it around and make it negative 5 and positive 1, then it wouldn't give me positive 4 and it wouldn't work. So I'm done. Once I found the exact two numbers that multiply to give me the last number and add or subtract to give me the middle number, then I'm good to go. And the next problem we have today is going to be almost identical, right? So it's a minus 4x instead of a positive 4x, which means that I still need 5 and 1, but this time I need the 5 to be negative, right? Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, which is what we want. So we found our factors. And all we do now is throw an x in front of each of them, throw some parentheses around it all, and we're done. All right. And then for the last one for the day, we've got x squared minus um, 4x. Actually, it's plus, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, plus 4x minus 12. There we go. So plus 4x minus 12. All right. So there's actually a lot of things that multiply to give you 12. 1 and 12, for 1, um, although one of them would have to be negative and one of them would have to be positive, right? So actually, let's list, uh, no, let's go in order. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll go in that order. But if I want a positive 4 and one of them has to be negative, meaning I'm going to have to subtract, that means I need to make the smaller one the negative one. Otherwise, I get a negative number. Right, negative 1 times 12, that gives me negative 12. Um, now, if I add them, or in this case, subtract, then negative 1 plus 12 gives me 11, right? Not 4, but it does give me a positive number, so it's good that I'm making the smaller number the negative 1. Because if I had made 12 negative and 1 positive, then it would have given me negative 11, right? And that would be even worse. But nonetheless, it doesn't work, so we keep going. 2 and 6 would be next. So I'm just going in order here. Um, so I talked about this in one of my previous videos, but basically if you have a, a number that goes into a lot of things, like 12 does, you can either just kind of play around with different things that multiply to give you 12 in your head until you find one that works. That's a little bit more um, advanced. So once you've kind of gotten factoring under your belt, you can do that. Um, so maybe that's you, maybe that's not, but I don't like to assume. So that's why I just go through each one. So I start with one, and then I go to two if I can, and then three, and then four, and then five, right? As long as it is a factor of that number. So two and six, and then the last two factors would be three and four, but we haven't checked two and six yet. If I make two negative and six positive, negative two plus six is positive four. So it works. I don't even need to go to the next one. Twelve does have another set of factors, three and four, but it doesn't matter because I found the two that work. Right, so throw parentheses around it, put an X in front, and we're done. Right, and I haven't done this in a while, so let me go ahead and throw this in here. 
if I needed to uh, check this, all I need to do is FOIL it out, right? F-O-I-L, first times the outers times the inners times the lasts. Um, and I don't want to make the video too long, so I'll probably do this uh, tomorrow where we'll check the FOIL, uh, check the factoring with a FOIL, because they're, they're opposites. But that's it for today, and this has been Mr. Kyle.